Hey guys, what's up? This is Sasha for President back with another video and today we're discussing the death of Bishop Eddie Long and the growing AIDS epidemic. Um, this is not an easy subject to talk about, but let's get right into the video, shall we? So early this morning, here on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, um, news broke out that Bishop Eddie Long, the, the big controversial pastor of a mega church, uh, New Birth Ministries in Atlanta, has died today at the age of 63. Um, recently, there's been so many different uh, photos and video of him that has come out over the last few months where he looked very sickly or at the very least, he looked like he had lost a lot of weight. Um, so um, there was a lot of speculation. Um, the main thing that people speculated was wrong with him months ago was that he had AIDS. And the reason why so many people said that is because Bishop Eddie Long, the big controversy behind him in the first place was that, you know, he had groomed, he allegedly, should I say, he allegedly groomed a lot of young males in his church and even some young males who were not in his church but I guess sought his guidance because he was as a pastor a public speaker and he would go to different cities you know and speak to a lot of people and mentor a lot of people and so apparently it's alleged that he um, has groomed a lot of young males to then in adulthood have sexual relationships with him and in, in exchange he he took care of them financially. Um, he was the minister of a mega church which served over 25,000 members, which is a lot. When you think about it, that's a lot of people looking to you for guidance and stuff. So a lot of people, when all of this controversy came out, it was, they were very torn. They were very conflicted because he led so many people and he was very instrumental in a positive way in a lot of people's lives. He would not have gotten to that size of a congregation had people not been moved by him, had people not believed in him, had he not been a help to some people. Now, uh, prior to all of this controversy and stuff like that, Eddie Long, um, his first wife, it's been said and reported that she, not well, not reported, it's been documented that she left him because she said he was very volatile and abusive in their relationship. And they had a son and she had to like escape with their son and stuff. Um, and after four years of marriage, she divorced him. Now, when I first heard about that years ago, that fact right there was very, very interesting that he had been very abusive because when a person is abusive to someone else, that means they have a lot of inner conflict. And uh, when I first heard about Eddie Long, I heard about him through the gay community, actually. Prior to me knowing anything about his church, about me knowing anything about him as a pastor and all this other stuff, we have something here called Gay Pride, which is popular in a lot of cities. They have major cities in particular, they have uh, Gay Pride. And Atlanta has a very big Gay Pride. New Orleans has a very big Gay Pride. And a lot of people from Atlanta will come to New Orleans Gay Pride and vice versa. So a lot of people, when they would come to uh, New Orleans from Atlanta, that's when I first heard about Eddie Long because they would give us all the gossip, all the gay guys would, you know, dish out all the dirt about who they slept with or who they know that their friends are sleeping with. I don't know why. It just was like a thing where people would just gossip about who they've been with, almost like bragging rights. And so, you know, people gossip, people talk. And so in Atlanta, there's a lot of celebrities and stuff. And, and that was the conversation. It was about certain celebrities and pastors that these people had been with. And to be honest, in my experience, from being around so many gay people, gay guys in particular, and I'm going to be honest, a lot of them are very heavily in the church it's just a fact and um, there's also a small portion of those that are in the church who thrive on like 
saying that they've gotten with a pastor, um, going against the grain because re so many different religions speak against homosexuality. I, I, you know, though this pastor may speak against being homosexual or gay or whatever, I, I can get this pastor and I can be with this pastor. It's like bragging rights for them for some reason. And that's when I first heard about Bishop Eddie Long. And then I next heard about him um, through the Real Housewives of Atlanta when that show first started. Um, Deshaun Snow, Eric Snow, the big basketball player, his wife, she faithfully went to that church. And then I saw like she was writing like $10,000 checks a week to Eddie Long. And that made me really interested. Like, well, who is this guy? You know, I only knew about him through the gays talking about they've been with this pastor and I'm seeing that, you know, this guy is bringing in this type of money and this type of congregation where it's like a lot of celebrities who were willing to shell out a lot of money um, would attend his church. And he would be on several episodes of the Atlanta Housewives, and he would even speak about opulence and be like, you know, oh, because, you know, I get X amount of money per show or per appearance. People pay a lot to see me. Like, he was kind of braggadocious in that way, and that kind of piqued my interest just to make me do a little bit research and see, well, like, oh, how many people go to this guy's church? Like, how how big of a church is this? And why is he so arrogant? That always turns me off to a pastor. But some people, they're very attracted to that. They love the fact that they could brag and say, my pastor drives a Bentley and my pastor is doing this and my pastor just bought a private plane. I don't know what that's about, but I know that there's a lot of people who love to attend churches for that reason so that they could brag on the pastor. I don't know if they think that some kind of way that pastor's wealth or that pastor's um, resources with some kind of way rub on them. I don't know. A lot of times people say church is a fashion show and stuff like that. And that's really unfortunate, but I have witnessed that. And I can't say that that's 100% true, but it is true in a lot of cases. So prior to any scandal or any controversy or anything like that, I had already gotten several different negative, uh, stories or, um, things visually fed to me and through hearsay about uh, Bishop Eddie Long. But I did not want to necessarily judge him off of those things because I did not attend his church. I didn't know this man personally, so I didn't want to take it too seriously. You know, everything I took with a grain of salt and felt like, oh, well, you know, that's on him. But when these allegations came out about him and young boys and grooming them in his church, I became kind of sickened and annoyed. Regardless of how you feel about God or Jesus or what your actual religion is, I believe that everyone should have some sort of faith. Faith gives you hope and that helps you carry through in life. So it's not about the religion for me. It's more about hope and um, something something higher than yourself to believe in to help you get through these things here on earth because we all go through so many different things there's no one on this earth who has not been through some sort of turmoil or heartbreak or anything like that and a lot of times you need something greater than yourself to believe in to carry you through uh, those things and so I really hate to see people play on people's faiths and use it and abuse it, it always saddens me, not just in churches, but just just in general, when people play on people's weaknesses and especially their faith, you know, um, it's really sad because so many, uh, especially in a homosexual community, there are so many people who commit suicide and things like that, and they just need faith. There's so many things already against them. They don't need somebody manipulating them in any way like that. The whole Eddie Long controversy, you know, it really saddened me, but um, he didn't get convicted of anything because once these acts occurred, they occurred when these people became adults. It's like he groomed them from childhood uh, in the congregation and through mentorship and things like that, groomed them to one day uh, have a sexual relationship with him, which is really sickening, but it's not 
um, shocking to me because I understand how uh, predators, that's how they act, you know, that's, that's not uncommon. And so all of this stuff was very public in the media and Eddie Long through it all. He never once said that he didn't do it. He kept comparing himself to people in the Bible and things like that. And he kept saying he was going to come out victorious. But I always found it interesting that he never once said these accusations are false. He never once said, I'm not guilty. He never once said, I didn't touch anybody. I didn't do anything. And Anytime these celebrities come out with their statements, I always look for stuff like that. I always find it interesting that so many people that are accused of things, they never say that they didn't do it. So it always leaves me to believe that they did do it. Because otherwise, why wouldn't you just above anything else, especially such terrible accusations, why wouldn't the first thing out of your mouth be that you did not do it? I always found that interesting. There are so many people that have been following this man for so long. He was the exact same pastor for 32 years. The main pastor for 32 years. When you think about that, there's people that age. There's people that grew up with only him as a pastor. They don't know any, anybody else. You know, so when you think about that, that's a lot of time to be grooming not only these people who allege abuse or sexual manipulation from him but uh by him but he groomed his congregation he was with these people for a long long time so they felt obligated and understandable no matter what the controversy was of course there's going to be people who are like absolutely not i'm not sticking around here you know i don't support this we have to leave this church i'll find another church or some people i know they fell out of faith and they totally didn't go to church at all anymore because of that but there were a whole lot of people who were like look this has been my pastor he's been good to me I don't know anything about any of these accusations, so this is going to continue to be my pastor. And so this man still had a very, very faithful following up until his death. This is all these, a lot of these people know. And especially, like I said, when you're dealing with people's faith, and faith deals with hope. So they look to him for so long that they, even if they disagreed with what he did, or, you know, they wanted to leave, it's kind of hard to leave when you put your hope and faith into a person. It's like any other abusive relationship. And so, like I say, I don't agree with any of it, but I totally understand it. It plays on people's psychology. You know, he groomed the audience or the congregation for a long time as well. So fast forward to present time. All this time, this man has not been convicted of anything. Um... But recently, like I said, he had been looking really sickly or rather had lost a lot of weight. So people assume he was sick. Um, and the first thing that a lot of people jumped to was AIDS. I heard about this. I saw it all over Twitter, Instagram, everything. People put it out there. Eddie Long lost a lot of weight. He must have AIDS. I was not quick to jump on that despite how I felt about what he did and everything like that. Um, or has been alleged that he did. His wife, no one associated with Eddie Long has ever come out and said that that is what was going on with this man and that is the cause of his death. It has been put out there by his staff that um, he died due to complications from an aggressive form of cancer. We'll get on that later. But uh, in no way did anyone ever mention anything about AIDS. Uh, for the past few months now that the pictures first surfaced and now that he's died, it's like for some reason a lot of people think that, oh, that solidifies this rumor. That makes this rumor true. See, he died. He must have had AIDS. And it really sickens me. I never jumped on that bandwagon and I never will like I said because until this man's family or some sort of medical report surfaces that this man had AIDS I would never want to put that out there because there's so many people who are right now living with AIDS we just passed an AIDS awareness month in December and this is exactly what these people spoke about and continue to speak about I've previously even volunteered myself with the no AIDS task force and I'm telling you these people work on a 
daily basis. People who have AIDS and people who don't. People who've lost people to AIDS and HIV. These people are out here fighting and fighting against these type of ignorant stereotypes and trying to dispel these different things on a daily basis. And here's something like this big controversial um, news headline comes out that this man is looking sickly or has lost an extreme amount of weight and they say, you know, he died. Oh, it must be AIDS because he was messing with little boys and this is God's way of punishing him. It is really terrible that so many people will put this out there like that. And so many people I know who are not pedophiles, who are not homosexual, who are everyday heterosexual people who contracted AIDS through needles, who contracted a man who contracted AIDS through his wife or, you know, whatever the case may be, there are so many different ways to contract AIDS. So the people who are trying to raise awareness to help get funding to find cures, you spread awareness, to help try to stop this growing epidemic of AIDS. It's rumors like this that get spread out there that make so many people think that the only way to contract, oh, this person must have had AIDS because, you know, they were out here messing with boys and that they're a pedophile or whatever. So then for some reason that gives a lot of people who are not gay and who are not pedophiles that make them think, well, I'm not gay, I'm not a pedophile, I don't have anything to worry about. And they're out here freely having sex and, you know, contracting the virus because they think that I don't fit into these stereotypes, so it must not apply to me. All these stereotypes do is perpetuate the ignorance. And AIDS is no joke. It's nothing to play with at all at all and it really saddens me that that's the first thing everybody jumped to because this man lost a lot of weight oh he must have AIDS there's so many diseases and viruses and different things I lost weight when I had the flu did I have AIDS absolutely not you know and it's terrible it is really sad it's really sad because I know people who have AIDS and this is very hurtful when things like this get put out um, it, it's counterproductive to the work that they do. His family said that he died from complications due to cancer. Now, with that said, they said uh, an aggressive form of cancer. I'm not saying he didn't have cancer. I have witnessed somebody very, very close to me uh, die from an aggressive form of breast cancer. And prior to that person dying, they did lose an extreme amount of weight. So it is very, very plausible that, yes, he may have had cancer. The only issue I have with that story is usually it's put out there a word before that, the type of cancer that this person has. And I found it very interesting that it was never said that, you know, what type of cancer Bishop Eddie Long had. They didn't say, oh, he uh, had an aggressive form of prostate cancer. It didn't say he had lung cancer. It didn't say he had brain cancer or anything like that, brain tumors. It, they didn't say what type of cancer. I found that very, very interesting. But at the end of the day, regardless of what type of cancer this man had, the point is the man is dead. He's no longer here. So whether it was cancer, AIDS, a disease is a disease, a virus is a virus, an illness is an illness at the end of the day. So constantly, literally beating a dead horse, you know, constantly going off about this man in his death is really, really pointless and pathetic, I say, because no matter how uh, upset I was when I first heard about the allegations of him messing with young boys or committing any type of sexual acts or manipulation with people in his congregation, no matter how upset that uh, made me or how annoyed I was by that, at the end of the day, now that this man has died, all of that comes to an end. And the only people that that will continue to affect is the people that he directly affected, his family, the congregation, who has to still live on with the trauma of what he did psychologically to them and emotionally to them. He didn't do anything to me. So me sitting around talking about, oh, yeah, you know, that's how, that's what he gets, you know, God punish him or whatever. You Look, that's how you get punished. 
That's how God punishes you. Because it's not my job to condemn nobody to hell. It's not my job to condemn nobody to cancer or AIDS or anything like that. I would never do something like that. Whatever this man did, it doesn't matter because he has paid the ultimate price. His life. So there's no more punishing him. It's over with for us, at least. We don't have to worry about Bishop Eddie Long still preaching. You know, if that was your concern, he's no longer preaching. You know, we don't have to worry about him messing with another young man. That's done with because he's no longer here to do that. And if there's anyone else that he affected um, who hasn't come out, that's for them to deal with. That's for them to still mourn and grieve and work through psychologically and emotionally or whatever. And I just pray for those people that they find some kind of healing eventually. And I know that uh, death does not bring complete closure. Yes, it brings some closure because you know that this person is no longer here to hurt anyone else. But at the same time, it does not stop any type of pain that has already been inflicted. And, and psychological, emotional trauma can live on for years and years and years, and especially if this person uh, abused you for years or put you through any kind of trauma for years. Then it's normal that it's years and years, and it could take years for you to get over these things. And I still don't think, through my own experience, I don't believe that you ever fully get over anything anything traumatic because there are such things as triggers and the least little thing can trigger you. So I understand for the people he directly affected, I understand how they could still go on and, you know, carry this thing on until they find some kind of healing or closure. But for us, what do we get out of that? This man is dead. This man is dead. There's nothing left for us to say about that. It's over with, you know, he paid the ultimate price. It's between him and God. And honestly, it's always between. It's always been between him and his creator. Honestly. And this is coming from a person who suffered through a lot that I'm definitely not going to go through. But um, at the end of the day, us getting all upset all over again upon hearing about the man's death, getting upset about things that he did in his life is pointless. Right now, I ask for the victims in this, focus on praying that these people, you know, find some kind of closure and healing now that this man is gone, rather than continue to harp on what he did when he was here. Because honestly, it's energy wasted. So I hope you guys got something out of this video, and I hope you walk away with this, um, not walking away with... A, a spirit of condemnation but just walk away with a better understanding that what's done is done and there's still people who have to live on after this and all these rumors of AIDS and all this other stuff that does nothing but hurt the people who really have AIDS who who don't who are not homosexual who are not perverted and who are not child molesters and all the work that people uh, do in the AIDS community to dispel these type of rumors. All this talk about AIDS and homosexuality and all this perversion, all that stuff does is totally work against these people's work. And also it totally hurts the people that this man already has hurt enough. It further hurts them because it has people looking at the people who have been sexually affected by Eddie Long. Now, with people saying that this man has AIDS, now it has people looking at these young men that he molested and had sexual relationships with or whatever. Looking at these young men, they're already going through enough trauma and heartache. Now they're being looked at like, oh, well, do you have AIDS? If Eddie Long died of AIDS, do you have AIDS? Looking at his wife. Did, your, did Eddie Long give his wife AIDS? You know, what about the kids and all this? These people have been through enough. Leave it alone. Let these people live and let this man be dead. Period. If he, even if he had AIDS, if they want to come out and say he had cancer, leave it alone. Leave it alone. And since he's 
he uh, died today on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and tomorrow is Monday, um, the actual MLK Observance Day, and there's going to be parades and all that other stuff. I don't want to post this video on tomorrow or today or whatever. I'm going to wait until Tuesday to post this video because uh, I just don't want it to be any distraction from the work that Dr. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King did or anything that that day stands for. Thank you guys for watching this long video. I did not expect it to be this long, but I appreciate you watching till the end and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.